Hi everybody, this is um, my son's YXZ build, uh, part two. I've, I think, completed disassembly. There might be a little bit left, but um, it's always kind of interesting to see exactly how much we take off of these cars to modify them. And, and really, this is just suspension and body. Um, I, I didn't do any motor uh, disassembly or work or anything like that, but... Um, this is pretty much what's left of stock parts. I'll use the shocks probably. The plastics are good. It just so happens that this car is not going to be red, so I'm not using those. It's just a factory cage, headlights, steering rack, wheels, tires, etc. If Yamaha would let me buy a car just like this, I would. But unfortunately, we got to get all the stuff we don't want and just take it all off. Um, so. Pretty much what you see is 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 where I'm gonna begin with reassembly with the new parts uh, that I went over on 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 last on the last video, but um, reuse the factory hubs and knuckles. Um, I'm probably gonna send these um, these hubs off for um, for powder coating to match. That's what I did on on, on Brooklyn's red car. Um, and I think it looks pretty cool if, especially with the, like the wheels for the sand, um, are, are fairly open pattern so you can see through. And so I like to see those hubs that are powder coated to match. It's pretty cool. Um, but, uh, factory drive line is still in there, front drive shaft, etc. Uh, you'll notice this little, um, it's actually a radiator. It's not an intercooler. Um, but it's, it's a. It, it's the uh, GYTR turbo radiator. So it, it so it's it's technically a Yamaha accessory, but it's a factory, I guess, available part. I guess not factory, but dealer installed is available. So this isn't necessarily the way it, the car comes, but but that is an accessory that I believe is available at your Yamaha dealer. Um, Weller installed the GYTR kit on this car for me, so it's really nice to work on a nice new car because everything's for the most part pretty clean. You don't have rusted bolts and things that are seized up. So it's really, it's really fun to turn wrenches like this. And also it, I'll mention stuff, just little touches that a great professional shop like Weller Racing does is, you know, they put the little tabs, the little markers on, uh, I guess it's like a paint pen or something that they use on all of the fasteners that they install. Um, and it's a great like safety measure uh, that they that they do so any any time you see uh, um, let me see if I can get around to some others but stuff that they install you'll see that they mark them that way uh, they've done it on on several of my cars on those things but uh, uh, but anyways uh, just nice to see those things oh you know what I just noticed I have not re removed the factory seat belts yet so that's one more thing I've got to get out remove some of the plastics and uh, Things like that. Those are pretty big, heavy-duty bolts um, that need to be removed. I think they are like a big Allen, yeah, you know, big Allen bolt. Um, so, also a good chance to take a look at um, the electronics. This is Power Commander Five with Auto Tune, and also, um, of course, Weller's ECU and a full throttle battery. And then you'll see that this is all wiring straight from Weller, the way that they did it. With uh, you know, they have a nice fuse block um, for the, and that's the four gauge charge wire that comes from the, um, from the, the tube works alternator kit that they installed. Let's see if I can find it, there it is. So real nice and clean. Um, got that on Brooklyn's car, like I mentioned in the last video and it's worked out pretty well. Um, one thing that I will mention, if you are doing that tube works alternator, this little factory um, it's like the seatbelt safety light, um, and it's also, I think it has a red light that lights up for the parking brake. I'm not sure, but it's a little red and green light that's in there. If that is unplugged, your tube works alternator will not work correctly. Um, and that caught me off guard once in my old blue car, um, because the, uh, like I unplugged that like when I got the car brand new, because I didn't like the light lighting up all the time. Well, whenever I had the alternator installed actually you know what maybe it was on this car i can't remember but on one of them and um 
once the alternator was installed, uh, I noticed that I kept having a problem holding a charge and I couldn't imagine that I didn't have enough current, but it turns out that because I unplugged that, the tube works alternator did not get like the, the proper signal or resistance. They use that LED as like a resistor or something somehow to to charge the uh, to charge the uh, the battery. So anyway, it's kind of interesting to note. Uh, I'm gonna leave the factory sway bar uh, in the rear. I'm probably gonna experiment with no sway bar up front. It's still installed here, but I'm probably gonna take it out just to try it. Um, I, I hate body roll and I'm usually a pretty big fan of sway bars. My first UYXZ, I had the Eibach, uh anti-sway bars, which are quite a bit stiffer and they have two holes, two adjustments. Uh, uh, or two adjustable settings, I guess, that you can set it at. And um, it turned out to just be too stiff um, in the sand. You know, you really want the the long travel to be able to work for you. And especially when you're doing transitions over, um, over like an angle, you really need your one side, the low side arms to be able to reach down to the sand while your high side arms are still pushed pretty high up. So... Um, on Brooklyn's car, I've left the factory sway bars and it feels overall smoother and better than than it did. I think it really depends on your type of riding, your speed of riding, as well as the type of dunes that you ride in. I, I ride primarily in Little Sahara, Oklahoma, and um, it gets super choppy and you really need to get as much, you know, loose articulation, I guess. You, you really want your wheels to be able to bounce around independently. So no sway bars or thinner sway bars uh will 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 help your will help your ride out quite a bit it certainly helps with driver fatigue um this x3 that i bought from my friend eric he took all of the sway anti-sway bars off completely you'll notice there's none uh, front and rear and the car's pretty low and there it's so wide x3s are so wide from the factory that you know it, you really don't um of, of course it's a 72 inch model uh, you really don't have to have the sway bars. So I've I've really enjoyed that car just fine with no sway bars at all. So I'm going to experiment with it a little bit with uh, with these Yamahas, um, at least on this one while I've got it all apart. So anyways, um, this is what a stripped down uh, Yamaha YXZ chassis looks like with, with none of these parts on it, suspension, seats, body, and cage. Um, is really all that's missing here. Oh, and lights, I guess lights too. It still has all the motor and all of the like panel plastic and stuff still in there. So, um, um, so it's not completely stripped down. I'm sure all of y'all have seen a Yamaha frame just sitting up on jack stands before. Uh, a couple of things while it's apart, back here is still together. You can't really see much here, but like if you've got a 2016 to 20. 18 model the frame is a little bit different in a few places uh, these tabs are usually something that I notice these are um, I guess Yamaha offers an accessory like little little lights I guess auxiliary lights I think is what they call them that can go in the grill so those tabs are there um, I'm not using them on either one of my cars so here's Brooklyn's car you can see those tabs in there not being used but you know, Yamaha from the factory offers little little bulbs that go right there. But those tabs, you can see. And, of course, there's new tabs in the back for the radiator uh, that's now rear located and things like that. But uh, I don't have it apart enough to see that. I went ahead and took the steering rack out as well. Um, I don't know if Yamaha made a change in the way that these are welded now. But on Brooklyn's 2019 YXZ 1000 SS uh, sport shift model those four little here's what they look like they're four little um they're not even I guess they're kind of a nut that the Yamaha um just kind of tack welds on anyways they they just tapped out like like you almost didn't even need to hit them with a tool or anything you could almost just spin the bolt and make them come off they're so super weak uh, but on this car this is a 2020 it's only one year model newer they were quite a bit harder to get out. So I don't know if Yamaha just has a inconsistent welding machine to do that or what, but 
Um, I had to work quite a bit and I kind of bent this plate a little bit to get those out. Um, you can see the marks there and you can kind of see how it's bent a little bit. Um, the reason I take those out is because with Weller's um, uh, aftermarket steering rack and tie rods, and they also have this back plate that goes back there that's so much more robust and much stronger. So those those little tack welded nuts on that thin metal plate uh, from the factory just need to be removed. Um, but anyways, I just noticed that they were significantly harder to get off on this car than they were on that car last year. Um, but, um, uh, so anyways, I'm going to start kind of putting things back together, um, on my next video and I'm, I'm probably going to do more video of the actual reassembly, uh, cause you haven't seen me turn a wrench at all on this thing. I'm just showing you kind of before and after each, each time I work on it. Um, so I'm going to start with, I think the steering uh, putting that, that back together while I have it all open and that much room to work on without the A-arms and shocks in the way and everything. So it'll be fun. And also I mentioned on the last video that I was just uh, swapping out Brooklyn's front axles. So her axles had a thousand miles, maybe a little more. So these are some brand new uh, Turner Eagles. I already replaced her rears uh, last ride, um, but I'm swapping these. I actually bought the four new axles for that car, for Carter's car. Um, but I went ahead and put the new ones on Brooklyn's and I'm sending her axles off to Turner Cycles to be uh, rebuilt and serviced. It's really nice. I'm in Texas, so I'm not far. It's like one day shipping, even if I just send it ground uh, to send them axles. And they have a really quick turnaround time in my experience. It only takes them a couple of days to to work on them and turn them around. So um, I should have like new axles um, in my hands here in uh, maybe a week, week and a half, something like that. So it shouldn't really hold me up or anything. Um, but uh, they're, uh, they're nice. The, the Turner axles, the product is great. It's super strong. Um, I have uh, noticed that I, I you know, it's, it's kind of worth making it a habit to, to send them in for service though nothing else just to freshen up the boots and the grease but um after a thousand miles uh, of of dune riding with long travel you know you really are working those cvs and they need to be freshened up a little bit um uh, i've noticed uh on, our, on brooklyn's car whenever we were in glamis last time i don't know if it's because the exhaust of this this particular car is so close to that cv but this rear driver's side cv boot uh, or the CV joint got really hot and started smoking and kind of steaming and the boot swelled up real big like a balloon. Um, and um, so it completed the ride. It wasn't, it didn't kill our ride or anything like that, but I had to let it cool off and then I kind of babied it for the rest of the, the time on, we were on in Glamis on that trip. Um, wasn't really a big deal because I had my backup car. I, th I think that time I had the X3 with me also. I can't remember, but um um, but anyways, you know, it's just kind of worth sending those CVs in to get them serviced. And, and Turner is, in my experience, very reasonable on their rates, um, uh, to do that. It's, it's, they, they replace the boots. So you got to pay for the boots. It's like $15 or something like that for the boots. And, and, um, and then it doesn't take them much time at all. And you basically get a brand new axle. Uh, they, they still, I think, reuse your same hard parts, but whenever they come back to your hands, they, they look like they are brand new. They're nice and freshened up and whatever. So anyway, so I'll get those out of the box um, whenever I receive them and, and they'll be on one of these videos. Um, anyways, that's it for now. Um, look forward to kind of putting this thing back together. I'm going to just put all these stock parts in storage. I decided not to sell any of these things. Um, because they're black, uh, they, they go with any car and, you know, in terms of color matching. So in the future, if I ever sell one of my YXZs, I'm going to have the parts to return it to stock pretty much overnight. Uh, it won't be, it won't be difficult to just swap those things. Um, and uh, I'll have them all here. I don't really waste my time with taking off all the little things. So the, the factory 
steering uh, or, or sway bar links all these little factory um there's bushings uh, i think they call these thrush washer washers it's like the seal that holds the grease uh on, on the bushings uh, all of those things um they're kind of difficult to hammer out or to press out and you usually maul them up anyways so i just buy new ones from uh like rocky mountain atv you can get them from your dealer i'm sure you have to order them um or uh, i believe weller sells factory yamaha parts but it's, it's a few hundred bucks and um it's worth it in my opinion but you know you get all of these little these little things that that you press in um and it's and it's just all nice new and fresh um sometimes i'll reuse the bolts sometimes i'll order new bolts but um oh and and uh ball joints as well uh nxs designs uses factory ball joints um, that's one thing that's different than the fireball kit. Uh, the fireball kit is very similar to NXS designs, um, but uh, the fireball kit uses aftermarket ball joints that just thread in, uh, as opposed to these, you've got to press in factory ball joints. So I'll probably make a video of, of me doing that as well whenever I reassemble it. Anyways, that's enough. I've got uh, a lot of work to do to kind of start getting things put back together, but it's going to be fun. Bye.